Manx Radio's Countryside is brought to you by NFU Mutual. Hello and welcome to Countryside here on Manx Radio. I'm Simon Clark and I'm John Kenyon. On this week's programme, I'll be talking to a representative of the National Farmers Union who visited the island recently and also to members of the department and a Manx Hill farmer talking about management of the uplands. I talk to David Cool, one of the winners of the Tomorrow's Farmer Awards. If you live here on the Isle of Man and you're looking for recreation some weekend or a fine evening, one of the best things you can do is go and survey the Manx uplands. But the uplands are changing, and demands on our uplands are changing. And that's why the department has initiated a review of how we manage them. The department invited Jim McAdam of the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development in Northern Ireland to come and chair the steering group looking at the study about Manx uplands. I went along to Deffa headquarters in St John's to meet Jim and to talk with him. But first, I spoke to Peter McAvoy, the Senior Wildlife Conservation Officer at Deffa. The department has put together a steering group with the specific remit of looking at the uses of the Manx uplands. That's everything from farming, recreation, archaeology, the wildlife. And I'm really trying to see what's, what's special about up there, what good management there is what we can do a bit better and really you know, sell that to, to the general public. And will that be very largely down to the department? The department's taking a lead on it, yes, but the steering group is made up of a really diverse range of people who are practically involved with the hills. And they've already met? They have. They've, we met once in May, which was really a, a meeting of minds, if you like, to, to see where everybody sits and what their interests and issues are with the hills. We have with us Jim McAdam from the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development. Uh, Jim, you were part of this steering group, is that right? Yeah, I think Peter's idea was whenever he set up the group that he wanted a chairman who'd be independent from the area because obviously in a small area like the Isle of Man, other people have vested interests, so it's good to get someone from outside, perhaps, who has a bit of experience in different scenarios to chair that group so that we can bring not just my own experience to that but try and get the best of the experience of all the people on the committee. But Are there issues being raised with, with, the, with regard to the uplands elsewhere or yeah. is it just here in the Isle of Man? Right across the British Isles, the uplands are really to the forefront at the minute because I, I know you're not, you don't, you're not completely bound by EU regulations but we are really addressing the whole, looking at the whole future of the common agriculture policy and support for the uplands and for the less favoured areas is very much to the fore at the minute. And because I think whenever these things were set up at first, people saw farming or agriculture was the only thing on the uplands. Now we're seeing really the uplands deliver across a whole range of things. But a successful agriculture is the fundamental bottom line, is the basis for all of those other things we want, recreation, clean water, carbon storage, biodiversity, all those things. But it's one of the most uh, traditional parts of our countryside, the upland, surely. It is, and I don't think anyone's envisioning we should change that. I think we want to that, that heritage value, that traditionality, and when you say traditional, you mean people having an income and a living and their successors having an income and a living. Here in the Isle of Man, I'm sure if you've walked the Manx Hills, you'll have seen the crafts that were in what would be not serious upland, but much higher than, than some of the areas around here, where people did gain even a meagre living in those days, but it was a way of life. Yes, I think that should continue, but people cannot just live by way of They have to be able to make a living as well as having a way of life. The preservation of that way of life is fundamental to all the other things we want from the hills and uplands as well as from the farmers. And I think that's the challenge of this committee, is to bring all those out. So what what do we want now from the uplands? The fundamental resource we want is um, a good cover of vegetation and a landscape that is both attractive but delivers the things we want. And to do that, we need to have a viable farming industry. Then we go on to look at the other things that we want from the uplands. And this is where government's roles going to come in. It's going to try and pull together all those other objectives that are fundamental to society here and try and deliver them as well. But farming is the, is the key to that, really. Well, I'm glad you've said that, because that would be my take on it as well, that, that you know, that the uplands really, and how the uplands look, depends on how they're grazed and how they're managed by the hill farmers who farm them. Yeah. The rest is a spin-off. Yeah. I mean, I, I have good experience of the uplands in Northern Ireland, and I've seen in other parts of the world. My visit in May was my first for 
50 something years because my mother tells me when I was two we came to a and b in Port Erin but I can't remember it. So this was my first visit for a long, long time and really the condition of the uplands to me comparing it to others is very sound here. It's healthy. The uplands are healthy. For example in Ireland, particularly in the west of Ireland, we have had a massive issue of overgrazing in the uplands and really a huge degradation of the landscape. Uh, in Scotland you've had other issues but um, I haven't seen that here I think the condition of the uplands is good it's a reflection on the quality of farming and the skills of the farmers that manage it and well, I think I, we're going forward on a good basis Well, very interesting discussions there between those two gentlemen as to what the future of the uplands may be but a man with a greater interest I do believe is a man from a family steeped in hill farming Ian Parsons It is reassuring to hear what Jim's got to say because yeah, we do feel like we are doing quite a good job of farming on the uplands over here. We've traditionally only been carrying one sheep's two acres, so we've never extremely overgrazed the hills like we've seen in other parts of the UK where they had headage payments on and they could carry as many sheep as they wanted. We've always tried to keep the right balance well, over here. Correct me if I'm wrong, Ian, but that doesn't even come up against what you would have been able to keep. You would have been allowed to keep, to have kept more than that, wouldn't yeah. you? Oh, yes. That's Government good. support was limited to one sheep to two acres. and But to be... To be fair, for the, for the sheep to survive healthily up there, you don't want to be overstocking them up there. You, you need to keep that balance right, that you're not overgrazing it so there is winter forage for the sheep. Carrying far too many sheep up there, and it'll only be a poor lamb crop that you pull off. They'll just be sort of small, undernourished lambs. So it, it's just about trying to keep that balancing act right. And as hill tenants, we feel like we do keep the sort of... The levels around about right at, and there's, yeah, there's a lot of work involved with burning and stuff like that, which also the shooting tenants are very good to take part in as well. So, it, yeah, it's been, it was good to meet Jim up there and walk the hills and, and sort of get the reassurances that the levels seem to be about right. Now, when you hear phrases like uh, right to roam and freedom of access and, uh, and hear Jim talk about what we want from the uplands now over and above what's been traditional... How do you feel about it? Do you feel threatened by that? Or, or I suppose when this was first talked about and sort of the first documentations were getting circulated, probably did feel sort of threatened by it. But I think it was fair to say the first meeting we had where there was quite a diverse range of people in the room, the common goal was quite similar, what people wanted. We, you know, wanted the uplands in good, good condition, maintain the, the full sort of biodiversity on the uplands. And I suppose the, the difference... With ourselves, there was myself and Danny Cray there, that we were actually trying to run a business up there as well. So that was different to other people there. But it was nowhere near as confrontational as I thought it would be. And it was it was really reassuring that most people's common goals were similar. Now, one of the threats to uplands in general is the viability of the hill farmer. Is that something that needs to be addressed as well, Ian? It is very concerning because, as I say, certainly without any government support, there would be no sheep in the uplands. They just would not stack up on their own. The returns are very low from them. For all, it is fairly low input compared to, you know, more intensive farming. It's still, there's a lot of labour requirement, both whether it be fencing, whether it be gathering, replacement stock, like importing new blood from, whether it be Scotland, Ireland, or wherever with the hill rams is very expensive by the time we get it here. So, the actual margins in the job are very, very tight on the uplands. Before we started to record this conversation, we were both citing areas that had been undergrazed, where stock had not uh, been on the hill for a number of years, and that's deteriorated considerably, hasn't it? Yes, and, and also even on the, the hills themselves, I think, especially following the, the spring that we've just had, where there's been an enormous number of sheep lost on the uplands, I actually think that's a greater concern on the Manx hills than overgrazing of them. The part I said to you that always stands out in my mind, I, you know, I travel up to the mountain from Laxey End many times a week, and just as you approach the Craigna Bar on your right-hand side, coming towards the mountain road, the area where the masts are up there, that's only one generation since that was farmed. Right. And, and I really think, you know, the, the likes of that, it, it, it's a severe fire risk. And also, if you try walking through it, you can't even that's right. walk the, the land. And if and there was no stock and no farming getting done on the uplands, I think there's a danger that most of it would end up looking like and that. And we all remember, remember what happened on Brad Ahead. Yes, and the fuel load on the hill really needs to be controlled. And as I say, the, the sheep are a good way of controlling that level, along with the burning work that's carried out by the the shooting tenants and the, the grazing tenants. Jim, as you hear Ian commenting then on, on um, his part yeah. in, in maintaining the uplands, do you find that it, it will be 
fairly easy and fairly reasonable to accommodate him as a hill farmer alongside the needs that are being met now from the uplands by the wider public perhaps. Yeah I think so I mean it's accommodating Ian and the likes of him who work and who have the upland tendencies is, is crucial to the whole picture really and as Ian says look what happens if we lose that farming base if, if the, nobody manages the vegetation nobody's objectives would be achieved it's in everybody's interest to accommodate the, the people that are, are actually trying to make a living from the hill and one of our big issues for example in Northern Ireland at the minute is undergrazing is abandonment of land and that's causing the government great concern about how we make hill farming viable because it inevitably just leads to degradation at the end of the day and that's what we don't you don't want in the Isle of Man and it's, it's certainly why we want to keep people like Ian on the land. Peter, as a department representative then, are you encouraged by what you're hearing these two gentlemen saying? Very much so, yes. And just to reiterate, you know, Ian's not just a sheep farmer as far as we're concerned. He does manage his vegetation. That produces clean water. It stops carbon getting lost to the atmosphere. We've got red grouse, hen hires, meadow pipits, all that upland wildlife that's there because of farming, not despite of it. And uh, we do value that as a department. Well, there I was speaking to Peter McAvoy of the Manx Department and to Jim McAdam of the Department of Agriculture in Northern Ireland and also to Ian Parsons from a highly respected hill farming family.